Hello everybody, it's Wyvern here with another episode of Fixing the Forgotten, where we discuss a given faction's units, heroes, lords, and regiments of renown that are underperforming, underwhelming, or undesirable in multiplayer, and what could be done to improve them, make them more appealing, or just make them a bit more competitive. Uh, obviously with focus on the competitive scene, but also with some thought given to single player, because some of these improvements would definitely help uh, the campaign. Now this time around we will be discussing the Vampire Coast, a faction that when it dropped was probably the worst balanced faction I've ever seen dropped in Total War Warhammer. Um, easily a good 30-40% to 40 of the roster was busted OP, another about 30% was reasonably balanced, and another 30% or to 40% was straight up garbage deer. Um, now this situation has been somewhat rectified since the uh, there have been some units that were improved to a more viable standing since the release of the Vampire Coast. That said, there are still plenty of units that are on both lean on both ends of the spectrum, both extremes, uh, overpowered as well as underpowered. And uh, we'll be discussing the underpowered units here this time around. Uh, as many of you may have noticed, we will also be discussing some of the uh, sub-faction specific units, because I do believe Sartos Militia is just not that good. Uh, Damned Paladins for Claustra, I do believe are solid, but uh, I do think there's a bit of lack of synergy with Aranessa, Sartos and Free Company, and those units. Um, so we will be discussing uh, them as well, some of these sub-faction options. Regardless, we are going to be diving right in with our first sort of uh, point of focus here, a Lord Aranessa Assault Spite. And uh, as you can see, there are actually, well, we do have an Octopus here for comparison's sake, but um, there are in fact no other lords or legendary lords here and that's because I actually believe that the Vampire Coast all of their lords are in fact viable uh, besides are very solid in a very solid spot besides Aranessa. Uh, Noctilus highly competitive still despite his nerfs. Um, Luther Archon very competitive in a sort of abusive pistol sniping way. Claustra very solid. All variations of the fleet admiral very very respectable. Uh, essentially as haggard versions of Luther or Noctilus with the added benefit, at least with the pistol and sword combo, uh, that you actually get spells on like Harkon. So that, that's actually pretty cool. And um, Aranessa kind of falls falls flat, in my opinion. Uh, she is functional. You can make her work, especially if you put her on a, on a, a rotting Promethean, because she does gain quite a bit of survivability there, so that negates one of her big problems, which is ease of snipage. Um, but she does remain having some serious issues in synergy with the roster. One of the big problems is that she is both routable as well as unhealable for the for the faction because she's not undead. Um, so that's definitely a bit of counter synergy. Having one of your legendary lords literally not synergize with your faction that way is kind of crappy. Um, especially when she's so flimsy, especially on foot. Like I feel like there's basically you never want to bring Aranus on foot because you're just asking to get sniped out by something. Um, whether that be magic missiles, normal magic damage, yeah, like Spirit Leech will frack you up. Fireball, which is super powerful against Vampire Coast in general, is devastating to Aranessa. So like two to three fireballs are enough to delete her from the game, essentially. Uh, another thing that I don't understand about Aranessa is that they removed her Hornswaggle. She was never the most competitive Lord, uh, except maybe when around release, when it was, she was bugged. She hit like four times or something with an animation. Um, but she's never been the most competitive Vampire Coast Lord. Um, and they decide to remove her Hornswaggle, the one piratey lord who where it actually makes a lot, a lot of sense, even more so than on Luther Harkon. The one that's most underpowered, arguably, in the whole roster, arguably the only one that's underpowered in the whole roster. And they decided to remove her Hornswaggle, which I think is stupid. And I think that would be one thing, just a step to make her give her more utility and immediately buff her. And I think that would actually, you know, make Ernest more appealing. Another option could be reduced cost that's often a viable fix, the one I'm not a fan of, especially not as far as Legendary Lords are concerned. I, I prefer some more thought go into it. I also do think that perhaps there could be a slight rework to Kraken's Bane uh, to make her a little more synergistic with Sartos and Free Company in particular. Uh, so one of the big problems with Sartosian Free Company, this is where we're going to get into Free Company here a little bit, and I'll, I'll discuss them in more depth in a little bit, is the fact that Sartosa Free Company uh, is very heavily telegraphed. The moment you pick Sartosa, you're likely running, or going to try to run Sartosian Free Company. There's very little reason otherwise. 
Um, because you are giving up all your strong legendary lords <laughs> to play the faction. Uh, and Search doesn't free company doesn't necessarily deliver. Uh, they are very easy to run over with cavalry, very easy to shoot to death, very easy to, um, yeah, just, just bludgeon into oblivion. And there's essentially like, and well, one of them is essentially literally empire free company with, uh, vigor immunity with Rowdy, and one of them is just a dual-wheeling sword, uh, sword unit. Um, so I think one thing, so going back to Aranesa, though, to explain what I meant with the synergy, is I could I would like if Kar Kraken's Bane either grant allowed her to grant nearby units charge defense against large, or allowed her to grant nearby, or granted nearby units some sort, and personally I would prefer straight up the, the charge defense against large, or if it allowed her to grant nearby units some missile resist. Now the missile resist, I think it's a bit odd. It's Kraken's Bane. It's all about destroying big monsters. So it seems weird, but like, I would like if one of her two abilities improved her, made it so Free Company would be more capable against enemy heavy cavalry and more survivable. Because right now, one of the easiest ways to run over Free Company is just to run them down with cheap cav. Like you don't even need good cav. Silver Helms, Reichsguard, whatever. That that will do. Empire Knights. And they're gone. And they're so easily telegraphed. You know they're coming. Um, it's just very easy to shut them down, uh, in my opinion. Another problem with Aranus, and going back to cost, and this is one argument why I would say she has issues with cost, is uh, you tie her up along... You have, so she doesn't have magic. So she doesn't have magic. She's one of the only two non-caster lords aside, aside, uh, aside from Luther, And so you have to bring a vampire fleet captain. And if you look at this vampire fleet captain, this is literally very stripped down. There's almost no way. The only way I could strip this down more while remaining with a functional cast, really, is I'd have to take off Hunger. This is an 1,100 gold unit right here. On top of Aranessa, who's not even on our crab, you're looking at 16, or 2,600 or 2,700 gold worth of units. In comparison, Noctilus over here is like 2,300, and you can see he's got his summon item. He's got Wraith Storm, and on top of that, he does have the heck summons as well as Melkos Miasma. He's got hunger. He's got his full kit. He's got Arcane Conduit. Plus, he's way tankier than Aranasai is. He's much more difficult to snipe. He's got his hunger so he can heal himself. So much more power, staying power there. And you really compare Noct Noctilus to this combo, and it's very difficult, I think, to justify without some sort of additional benefit. Uh, like th that's th that's why Luther is functional because Luther brings other benefits. Luther's very tanky, especially because he's got insane magic resistances. He's got his stupidly disruptive missile missile pressure. He's got pretty insane amounts of self heal, especially if he's not terrorized. Um, yeah, Luther's no pushover. Luther can frick with your opponent really, really well. Um, Aaron, uh, like she, she gives you a net, which is nice for a faction like this. Um, with for such a shooting heavy faction, it's like if dwarves have a net, it's nice to have. Um, but besides that, she doesn't bring too much to the table, especially if she doesn't get her uh, her hornswaggle back. So yeah, I'd say that's that's another thing. Either she needs to get hornswaggle back, or th this is a reason why she should be much cheaper. Because the fact of the matter is, you're paying, you are forced to bring a caster with her, and that is very very crippling right now. It's a re it's another reason not to bring her. Regardless, going on to the infantry field of things. Uh, so first, we're going to talk about the unique units. And um, Sartos and Free Company is going to get touched on here. So the big problem with Sartos and Free Company is that, once again, like Iron they don't synergize well. You can't heal them uh, because they aren't undead. They do route. Their leadership is not very good. It's only 60 baseline on the shooting unit. I believe 66. Oh, no, it's, it's only 60 on the uh, melee unit as well. Why is this, this guy only at 64? Oh, it's actually 55. Okay. So I was mistaken. Either way, the leadership is not very good, <laughs> as you can tell. Um, now, they do get the benefit of Rowdy, which gives perfect vigor, which is not, not a bad ability. It's also in Centigors, and it's not a bad, a bad ability by any means. That said, I think both units could use some additional benefits because they're so heavily telegraphed. Like I said before, it would be nice if Aaron has to synergize with them better. But another option would be... Um, to grant them some benefits. Now, first and foremost, and this is a proposal I'd also extend to normal free company militia, um, allow them to fire on the move. These guys are running around with pistols, it's a sword in one hand, pistol in the other. Zombies with a pistol in one hand are able to shoot and move for some ungodly reason, and you're telling me a human can't? Like, what are these, John Wick zombies versus, like, random mook humans? I, I, I don't know. It's just weird. Um, 
I really do think Fire on the Move would be nice, and that would immediately make Free Company a little, or the Sartos Militia and Free Company a little more viable. You can pressure backline, stuff like that with them, be firing on the move while advancing into melee. Uh, would, would give you some nasty opportunities there. On the, on the uh, and keep in mind, I think they need some sort of greater incentive here, because you're paying, especially on the normal Militia, you're paying 150 more gold over the normal vampire, or the normal zombie gunnery mob. Um, for yeah, slightly better melee stats, but they were out, which is really not good. Um, yeah, you use a vigor, but that's just not that value. You're paying 50% more for stats that just don't give you that much value, uh, which is why I really do think that fire on the move would be nice for these guys. Uh, Sartosa and Free, it, it would go very well with the aggressive style that Sartosa promotes because you've got all these vanguard units. You don't synergize well with your slower infantry, uh, because you're faster, you've got 36 speed on your free company. Um, so you don't synergize well with zombie play. So you want to go aggressive. You want to go in with more, and you're too squishy to start from long range. So you're probably going to want to go in with Morngulls, Vanguard with them. Go ham. Um, so being able to shoot on the move, promote some aggressive play there for the Sartosan Militia. Uh, for the Sartosan Free Company, they do have bonus versus infantry, which is nice. Bonus is only six though. So not, not the craziest amount there. Uh, relatively low HP at only 59.40. You have that immunity figure, they do have 25 armor. Keep in mind though, these guys do cost 50 more than Empire Swordsman. You get no shields, and obviously you get that rowdy, you do get Vanguard. But I'm not sure they're really worth 450 gold, to be honest, because they're just so flimsy. Cavalry Charge destroys them, and Missile Play destroys them. Missile Play is already very strong against this faction, and it destroys these guys even harder because they also rout. Um, they don't synergize that well. I would honestly like to see these guys drop in cost by a good 25 gold, maybe 50 gold. I think that would put them in a much more appealing position. Those are my two cents though on Free Company. I think Free Company is decent. It's just the fact that they're so heavily telegraphed when you pick Sartosa it makes them very annoying to use. Now moving on from there, we do have Depth Guard, and I'm sure many of you guys are not surprised they're on here. Um, all three variants, though, including the Regiment Renown. That said, Normal Depth Guard I think is in a decent spot mostly um i don't want them to be considered lumped in with normal depth or with depth guard with halberds because they're not depth guard normal depth guard can mulch through cheap chaff they're very powerful on a, in an aggressive roster uh or build they can demolish units like sister of slaughter they, they have potential to be devastating um it can be difficult to pull it off but when these guys work, they work. You can destroy a front line, roll straight through to the back line, demolish archer lines because you're fast enough, you've got 36 speed. They can be brutal units. Don't get me wrong. Now, what I would like to see for all Depth Guard, though, is an increase in HP. If you've only got 45 models, the HP per model is barely over 100, which is pretty terrible, um, given that, for example, Black Orcs, who are cheaper than this unit, have over 8,000 HP overhaul, and they're getting well over, over 100 HP per model. There, You're looking at, like, one... 30 or something, 135 maybe, per model. It's, it's insane. With these guys, you're nowhere near that. Uh, so that would be my first suggestion. About 200 more HP for the whole unit. You know, that adds up to about 4 HP per model. Uh, maybe 5 HP per model would be nice. Something like that. Make them a little tankier. And I actually think that would be good enough for normal Depth Guard to make them a bit more of an appealing choice because they become less of a risk. They have more potential to regain health with their uh, hunger ability. Makes them much more much more appealing. Now, Depth Guard with pull arms are in a much grimmer, grimmer sort of position. Uh, they're essentially a pure defensive unit, so they are quick for Halberd, which is nice. But if we compare them to Blackguard, for example, look at that stat comparison. This is with Frenzy active, by the way. Um, so these guys are actually hitting better than they normally would. Without Frenzy, they've got minus 8 melee attack, so they're actually have a lower melee attack than the uh, Blackguard does. This is without Blackguard getting Murderous Prowess, by the way. Um, and you've got a difference of 1,700 HP, 10 armor. Um, and these are squishy elves, by the way. And these units both cost the same. Blackguard, despite having 30 models more, hits harder. Um, has a higher melee defense, higher charge bonus, despite the fact that these guys are like rabid berserker pirates, vampire pirates. These guys hit weaker than friggin' Blackguard. Blackguard here does have slightly less bonus for a charge, so that is a bit of a downside. Uh, but besides that, in most ways, Depth Guard with Pull Arms is just trash in comparison. Uh, Black Guard is already not a particularly good Halberd unit when it comes to fighting other infantry. Um, 
I'd say these guys are even worse. They, they tend to suffer even worse because their HP is so low, so especially more elite infantry destroys them, uh, ignoring the fact that elite infantry isn't that popular in this coast to begin with. But um, their ability to counter cav is very limited because they're such a small unit, so they're not able to flex around that effectively. They're very susceptible to missile pressure. Uh, they're not as effective at clearing up chaff. Um, yeah, they can bludgeon large to an extent if they get on top of them, but getting on top of them is very unlikely. Um, the unit is just in a very good spot. First and foremost, what I think should be improved on these guys, and what I would like to see is, I would like to see them work as a sort of offensive anti-large. Now these guys are, everyone was sort of paranoid about depth cards when, the when they were about to drop. Uh, and this does extend, by the way, to the Bloody Reaver Depth Guard, which has the, uh, or Deck Guard, who does have a Rage, which makes him a little tankier, but not enough. These guys cost 1600 it's insane. So one of the things uh, I would like to see is make them, you know what, they are already a bit of an offensive halberd, they're very mobile. Go with that. Give them a bit of a charge bonus, perhaps um, give them greater mass per model, make them, make them more resilient to being knocked back or knocked over, make it so they can uh, tank a charge a little better. Give them better offensive stats. Make them hit super hard. Make them hit for like 50, 55 weapon strength. So they can actually actually tear units apart in melee. Um, and it doesn't have to be all AP damage or something. You know, it's not like they've got to be given, you know, um, a straight 15 buff to their AP damage. It could easily be, you know, 5 and 10 or whatever the ratio is. Uh, I, I think 5 and 10 would be about correct here uh, to maintain the correct ratio. But it would make them better. At that point, they would be offensive. So, okay, I'm not... Compared to Blackguard, I'm going to be hitting much more consistently. On uh, If I'm aggressive, I gives you a little more versatility. You can... you could If you do an aggressive build, you can use them for better support. Um, especially with that additional HP boost. And if your opponent does get cavalry in, it means that they are going to get messed up. Because right now, these guys are honestly less of a threat than other elite halberds. And other elite halberds are not already not that much of a threat to begin with. Uh, but because these guys are just have so few models are so easy to just barge past they're not that much of a threat so I do think higher weapon strength higher offensive uh, sort of high, higher offensive stats maybe better charge bonus uh, and some higher mass would be a good way to go with these guys make them a little viable otherwise a straight price cut these guys are not worth more than like 1100 in their current state uh, straight up that may, might also be an option uh, and the same same treatment should extend to the bloody reavers uh, I just kind of include them in that Next up, we do have the uh, Bloated Corpse. Now, this unit is simply troubled. Its potential is huge. Its uh, actual performance needs to be garbage because you just intercept it with a hero, it detonates, you get nothing out of it. Um, my personal recommendation would be to change Gaseous Demise into an activatable ability. Um, Make it so the, so you could change. Currently here, the noxious disintegration only happens when the unit's HP is b greater than 20%, uh, or after, below 20%, which makes it a little difficult to snipe. Uh, 1,200 HP, unless you focus very heavily with missile play, is difficult to knock down, admittedly. Um, so I could see, for example, bumping Noxious Disintegration up to 30% and removing Gash's Demise, turning this into an activatable. So you could actually get a good position with your Bloated Corpse, get it get it well sort of positioned, and detonate it that way. I would still leave it open to being sniped by heroes. If a hero gets a few swings in, Bloated Corpse dies, boom, done. Uh, nothing to be said there. Uh, still leaves your opponent some ability for counterplay by sniping it out with ranged pressure. Uh, they could still bog it down with trash, which is still an option. Otherwise, I'll reduce its cost. Bloated Corpse... If it was like 350 to 400 gold, I could see it being more appealing. A uh, very high risk, high reward unit, but it, the risk would at least be a little more acceptable. Regardless, in its current state, the Bloated Corpse is nothing more than a sort of either noob trap or meme machine. Uh, either way, it's definitely not a competitive option by any means. Next up, before I do go to the uh, bats, because they're going to need some, or uh, before I do go, I, actually, I do need to touch on the Pirate Gunnery Mob. Um, yeah, we'll touch on them first. So zombie pirate gunnery mob with bombs. Uh, straight up, I just think they need cost reduction. Um, 120 models. Their damage per hit is not very high. Their ammunition is still low at only five. But they're cheap. They're 400 gold, so I, I find that acceptable. I think that the unit is just still a little overpriced. I think it should be worth no more than 350. Um, 
compared to normal zombie pirate gunnery mob with just pistols, uh, these guys really don't compare. Uh, the, 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 the alternative to that would be to give like strip away like three of these guys' ammunition and make them zo like zo normal zombie mobs and melee mobs instead, deckhands, uh, and with just a few well, basically like miners with blasting charges, zombie edition. Um, but if we're gonna keep this melee or this range set up with these guys, I believe it would be prudent to uh, drop their cost down to 350 um, maybe even 300 I, I think they're just overpriced. Next up, the Queen Bess, and this is a bit of an awkward one. Now, she can be devastating in some matchups and absolute garbage in others. Uh, my main problem with the Queen Bess is that, in my opinion, her HP distribution is atrocious. And to show you what I, I mean here, we're actually going to th throw things into play here, and you can see she's got 7,000 HP. Now, what I'm going to do is order the crew to dismount the machine, and you can see how the crew's 5,000 HP here on 36 models. That means that the Queen Bess herself only has 1,800 HP. That is a very much, in my opinion, a big part of the reason for why the Queen Bess is horribly balanced right now. Um, such low HP, a huge hitbox, makes Queen Bess incredibly easy to snipe for enemy artillery, for enemy magic missiles, fireballs, units like that. At the same time, the ludicrous, and I mean ludicrous HP of the zombie mob. Like, you, we are talking... What is this? Like 150 HP per model? I'm gonna just I'm actually gonna pull up a calculator real quick and do the math. Because this is just insane how much HP the crew gets. Um, we're talking 145 HP per model. On a bunch of rotten second rate zombies. Like like you're seriously telling me that these guys deserve 145 HP per model. That's more than black orcs. You heard it here first, folks. This guy here is beefier than a black orc. So the end result of this, what I'm, where I'm getting at here, is the Queen Bess is stupidly vulnerable to missile play. And um, whether that be artillery, enemy missiles, like, I, oftentimes when I go into this match, what else? I just bring bring away stalkers, because one, they counter your enemy casters, infantry, that sort of thing, very effectively. But also because I just delete enemy Queen Besses in, like, two shots uh, of uh, Air of Kernis, and maybe, like, a single or two normal shots. Um, at the same time, cavalry and disruptive backline harass does basically fuck all against the queen bess because they can't kill the crew the crew's got 5000 hp if your opponent drops is five feels it's really bad they drop in vacation and heck and heal for insane amounts um which is in my opinion an absolutely horrible 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 system of balance uh, so my recommendation would be swap around values uh, make the queen bess's crew no more than like 3600 maybe even drop the queen bess's overall hp but make it so the queen bess's crew has no more than 100 hp per model uh, like 3600 tops maybe less, shift the HP over to the actual Queen Bess gun. So that the Queen Bess herself uh, can be, instead of 1,800 worth of cannon and 5,200 worth of crew HP, it can instead be something like 3,500 worth of cannon and 3,500 worth of crew. It will make the Queen Bess much more easy to shut down with melee, much more difficult to shut down with ranged cheese, essentially. Uh, because right now, if your opponent can bring fireball, if your opponent can bring some sort of direct fire artillery, the Queen Bess is literally a stupid suicidal option, in my opinion. Uh, and if your opponent can, um, can't bring that, if they're stuck on, say, infantry, then or uh, cavalry and melee units, then the Queen Bess can become very, very oppressive. So that's just my two cents there on why I think the Queen Bess or how I think the Queen Bess should be reworked. Otherwise, I think she's pretty potent. Like, if she's just allowed to work, um, she can deliver a lot of damage. She can definitely pay for herself. I think the Queen Bess is actually fairly well balanced, all things considered. Uh, just as far as, like, her actual artillery side of things goes. But the countermeasure system for her is very, very poorly designed. Finally, we have Bats. And uh, here we've got... All three units of the, the deck droppers, and I, I wanted to discuss a few things on these guys. Uh, first of all, normal deck droppers, a bit of a separate situation from the others here. Now, the unit I compare them to immediately in my mind is Pterodons with uh, Javelins, and I think these guys fall quite a bit short of Pterodons, despite the fact that Pterodons aren't particularly raid to begin with. Uh, now, granted, deck droppers here do have more missile damage overall, potential, uh, they do have the benefit of being undead, so they're unbreakable. Uh, they do, of course, have extra powder. But they don't have bombs like Pterodons do, which 
ultimately, especially those bombs where had a fixed UI, does make a difference. Uh, they don't have poison there, so and they don't have 360 fire, so they're much more susceptible to being interdicted and shut down by uh, enemy airplay. Uh, they do have slightly shorter range, makes them more susceptible to anti-aircraft fire as well. Um, all, uh, they don't have missile resist either. Once again, makes them a bit more susceptible to anti it, What I'm getting at here is that deck droppers are just, in my, despite the fact that they are 150 cheaper than pterodons, I think they just don't quite deliver. So what I'd like to say, I do think that the normal unit of deck droppers here could use a slight cut to there. Um, especially because it's a read re unit, you can't bring too many of anyway. I, I think they could use a slight cut to price. Another 50 gold or so would be decent. Uh, but that brings us to bombers who I actually think are freaking atrocious. So when the bombs were reworked, uh, the foot bombs got reworked in a really, really solid fashion. They uh, got a bigger unit size. They um, they got more ammunition. So they became, you know, a decent competitive pick. Uh, perhaps not a top tier unit, but mostly viable. Like I said, give them more, give them slight, make them a tiny bit cheaper and they'll be in a good spot. Uh, flying bombers are nowhere near that. They're trash. Um, first and foremost, these guys cost 600 off the top of my head for normal deck dropper bombers. For reference, pterodons with fire leash bolos, which I already called trash in my previous video, cost 750 and have... This is the real kicker here. For 25% more cost, or I guess these guys are 20% less cost than pterodons, these guys do 50% less damage. Uh, they're no better in melee. They're much slower and easier to catch in the air, still. Uh, they don't have 360 fire. They don't have a rock drop. They don't have missile resist. And despite that, their maximum damage potential compared to pterodons with fire eligible is, I guess, it's kind of benefited by the fact that they fire faster, but that's like the only thing going for them. Despite that, these guys have 50% less damage output overall than fire eligible bolas. And because you're dealing with explosive weapons, uh, fact is that the overall impact you're going to get is also much lower because you've only got nine volleys. So whereas fire leash bullets, while yeah, you have less models, you are ultimately going to get more volleys. So against especially tight clump, you're going to get more value because um, oftentimes you're going to be hit. Like while uh, oftentimes you're just going to hit um, more units over time um, that way. Whereas you're you're oftentimes not really going to generate that in my experience with the deck dropper bombers, um, especially because some units will get like knocked over and stuff, and uh, you're potentially looking at a wasted ammo that sort of thing. So the easiest fix for deck dropper bombers would be like literally 200 gold off. These guys are not worth more than 400 in their current state. They're pure trash. Similar thing extends the regiment for now. The Salt Lord Scuttlers. These guys are interesting because they've got a theoretical niche right here with sundered armor and AP projectiles. You'd think they'd be great with like depth guard, but that's about it. That's legitimately the only unit they really synergize well with depth guard and I guess Sartos free company because so little of the Vampire Coast melee roster is competitive or like serious melee roster is even non-AP. So Sutlers, Scuttlers essentially have the same issue as the bombers, uh, normal bombers. What I personally think would be the best fix would be given more either more damage per shot or more ammunition. Uh, personally, 15 ammo would be a nice fix. Like, give them their damage output. These guys are very slow. They're very clumsy. They're very simple to damage. Give them a decent amount of damage output over time. Uh, if they are supposed to be worth 600 gold. If they're not supposed to be, if they're supposed to be trash that flies and throws a few grenades, then these guys are not worth more than 400 gold and should be scaled back accordingly. Uh, I, I really, these units are not good enough. Deck droppers with guns being an entire, or handguns being an entirely different story. Those guys are arguably still overtuned. But these guys just are, do not generate value, almost ever. Um... But that's really my two cents here, is either give these guys, well, I guess the other option would be to increase, so either increase their missile damage, make it so these guys hit harder with their grenades, because right now they barely do more than the, so these guys do, with their grenades, they do 19 and 6, as opposed to the uh, 24 and 7, so you barely gain anything on deck dropper bombers, and you've got a sixth of the models, not even, that zombie pirate guardian mob has. 
So that was a bit of a rant, but uh, holy hell, these decks drop are freaking trash. In my opinion, like I said, five more five more rounds of ammo, uh, 200 gold off, some or a increase in damage output by like legitimately 50% per grenade. Or some combin or some sort of hybridization or like interim of those things. Pick a choice. I, I don't really care which of the solutions CA would run with, or like maybe there's something else. But really, these guys are in their current state are legitimately complete garbage. So that's that's the Vampire Coast roster for you guys. Um, these are my simply my suggestions, my thoughts and opinions on the matter. Uh, obviously, everyone's free to have their own take on things. If you guys don't agree, or if you do agree, if you have your own. Uh, if you think there's some units I missed, or some unit I or some solution I've missed, or some unit I think I've unfairly underestimated here. Let me know in the comments. Uh, I find it always fun to pitch these things to the community and uh, discuss what could we could be done to improve the game. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you found it entertaining and fun. If you did, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and share. If you have any comments, criticism, questions, as I just mentioned, don't hesitate to put them down below. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye for now.